And hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> there was a uh, slight delay there. Alrighty, I'm just jumping in. There we go. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Tom Vassell, and with us from his own channel, it's Richard Rottoham. Richard Rottoham. Yeah. So, the Rotto, for folks who don't know, my full name is Richard Allen Ham. My whole life, my family called me Raw for my initials. Uh, and they still do to this day. And when I started playing EverQuest a million years ago, I needed to come up with a name for my little halfling cleric. And I went, oh, how about Rotto? Because uh, it rhymes with Frodo. So Rotto is really my hobbit name. Oh, that makes a lot more sense now. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I always call myself Tomrick in any fantasy game. I don't know why. It just sounds like a fantasy name. It does sound like a fantasy name. And in a so, different universe, that you it could have been... Um, Tom Rick tumbles through. No, that doesn't work. Dice Tower's I, probably better, I think. Yeah, I started playing a sci-fi game, and I was like, oh, I can't call myself Tom Rick, and I sat for the longest time. Then I thought, <laughs> eh, Tom Vassal works. You know? I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, ah, I'm going to get started. I don't got time to focus too much on the name here. Well, it is another week in April. It's amazing. I'm, I'm looking back at uh, all the different games that have come out, and I'm seeing some games that came out last April, and I'm thinking, wow, they're already a year old. But there's there's a lot of cool stuff out right now. I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff on on Kickstarter. You know, yeah. I was, I have to say, I was I was wondering if Kickstarter would kind of go during this time. But I was just looking at the active projects, and there's a lot of really cool, interesting stuff out there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's really, I mean, I, I've had a lot of really great stuff to cover. Uh, in part, uh, because actually a lot of stuff got pushed from last month to this month. Because everybody was kind of caught uh, sure. no unawares, and so things got pushed back. I do know from, because I often cover Kickstarter games, and I'm always talking to folks, uh, people are worried about June. And they're like, okay, we got to get this in now, while folks are still willing to spend. Uh, because depending on how long world events continue on, things might be drying up in May and June. So I think that's another reason we're seeing an unusually good month for Kickstarters. Normally, April definitely slows down. Sure, but a lot of these were scheduled for around this time frame, too, though. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so yeah. what's on the table in front of you? I see. I can't even tell what those things are. It's, are those miniatures? Uh, no, they're uh, they're wonderful little Michael Menzel standees. And it's oh, I know the, that is. Uh, and or Liberation of Reitberg, which uh, Z just put his video up. And by the way, congratulations to Z. He totally nailed this. I uh, often agree with Z, and rarely were we more simpatico than his feelings about this. But I'll be filming it this afternoon, and I'll be going into a little bit more detail than him. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah the coolest thing about this, as always, why, Tom, why don't all developers do two-sided standees? So you have the front and the back. I mean, it's just such a simple little thing, and then when you put them down, you can feel like, oh, he's facing away. Ah, he turns around like, um, you know, arm Troyer swivel theater. It's ah, oh, well, I'm confused. Why? So all the, I mean, I love Gloomhaven's miniature or not miniatures standees, but they'd be so much cooler if they were two sided. So they have a front and a back, so they feel more like miniatures. Yeah, I don't. Well, it's double the price in artwork. Yeah, but it's worth it. Yeah, it might be. It might be. I'm. I'm not. I don't know. Sometimes standees bug me. Some. It's not that I. Um, it's not that I'm pro miniature versus standee. It's sometimes I like something sliding around the board. Like I would mm -hmm. prefer a tile that lays flat. I think over a standee because I find that standees oh. fall over for me all the time. Uh, especially nowadays, some games come with these really big standees or really awkward ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't even the tried to put together. get problematic just because they're so top heavy and they can topple so easy. Personally, um, I always kind of felt it, and Gloomhaven proved it for me. I prefer standees to miniatures because well, I, I wasn't am going not down that how route. to paint those things. <laughs> and I would rather have something colorful and you know beautifully arted up rather than a whole bunch of little blobs of gray, you know? Well, I'm trying to, I prefer pre-painted miniatures to everything. Uh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, obviously. And how often do we get that? Um, well, I suppose if you're Mage Knight fan or claustrophobia? No, there's actually, oh. 
That's interesting. Top ten games of prepainted miniatures. I'm gonna write that down. What a that's good, a good one. Oh, what a good I'll thing you said there. Right now, because I just played them with them for the first time a couple of weeks ago. The preprinted miniatures that came from WizKids for Agricola were fantastic. Aren't they really nice? The the problem is, I mean, I wouldn't those. You 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 pay a little bit for those. Yes, they are. I mean, yeah, they're definitely a cut above in terms of cost, but they are worlds better than pretty much any other pre-painted mini I've ever seen. Don't you only get uh, one? They're, they're not quite X-Wing quality, but they're definitely above Attack Wing quality. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yes. Uh, <laughs> that is an interesting one. I'd have to sit there and think about it for a long time. Anyway, we don't have time for that right now. Yes. Um, no one wants to watch <laughs> a top ten being made. Actually, some people do like that sort of thing. But... Um, we are here. We're talking about various things in this show. And t as always, if I can slide this device over here, we're going to start with mechanisms. We're going through Board Game Geek through the mechanisms that were designed by Jeff Engelstein and compatriot. I apologize. I forget the, the person he did it with. And today we're talking about a very small category yes. called the Advantage Token. I guess a small token category here. for a small mechanism. When it falls right down, because it's one token. Well, it's it's should have been called, I think, advantage token slash card, because in many sure. games uh, it point. is that. So this yeah. is one person has a token that permits him to do a special action or modify an action. Once you use this, the token passes to another player. So they they say it was used first in Storm over Arnhem. It's best used or most well one of the ways that people know it is in Twilight Struggle. In Twilight Struggle. There is the China card. This card gives you five actions that you could use. We normally, the uh, the number of actions that you can take in a game is the most you could ever take is four. Five is pretty awesome, but whenever you use it, you give it to your opponent. Yes. And them hanging on to it stops you from doing it. Yep. Um, now, on Board Game Geek, they only have 16 here. I feel like there's more than this. I feel like there's just some that aren't in this category. I would imagine there are probably quite a few that are missed. Although, honestly, I couldn't think of any. Um, you know, The main ones that immediately jumped into my mind were Agricola and Concordia. And I totally forgot Navigador had one, too, but I went back and checked, and yes, it does. All right, so what's and the Agricola like, one? The Agricola one, by far, is the best. Uh, there are just a class of, I think there are always minor improvements. Maybe there's some, no, no, there's always minor improvements where um, they're really simple little things. Hey, if I play this minor improvement, I'll get a couple of carrots, and then I hand you the card. And now in a future turn, you could play that. And oh, the right. Move to the next player. That's right. I forgot about that. That's not in every game, though. Pointing to the next player when you put it on the table. You're right. I really, I really like that. I love that concept. I wish more games had it, where you essentially have a cool event that you can do, yeah. but then you help you help the next person out a little bit. So you sometimes debate whether it's worth it. Although for me, I almost always will give it to you. I'm okay oh, that's with you very getting kind something. Of you. Well, to I me, want the I most want my stuff. Thing about that, if I have one that says, "Oh, I'll get a couple of carrots," sure, that's fine. I'm gonna wait until after you go and get carrots for yourself. Then I'll give it to you. Uh, because they really do introduce, when used well, an element of interesting decision-making. Because, yeah, maybe this is really useful for me, but is it even better for you? Because if it is, maybe I shouldn't let either of us have it. Uh, kind of a little miniature hate draft going on there. And it sure. is all about timing. But it's a great example of one of my favorite things in board games, positive interaction between players. Uh, you, you can work, you can be really reaching out and touching other people, but in good ways instead of, oh, let me just tear all the stuff down you've done. And anytime a game does that, and they're so good in Agricola, they're one of my favorite cards to get because most of the time, the uh, the minor improvements you have to build, they're really expensive. You gotta work a long time for them. Yeah, and then, oh, my are. whole game has to change for this. But these are just like, a, oh, you know what? Sometimes I'll, I'll just boop, put that down, move it on. And it's just like a nice little, um, you know, just jet juiced i'll, I'll tell you what though i often don't draft those cards because oh. i assume if, if, oh, if they're drafting coming to you i'll assume that my opponents are nice enough to use them and give to me so why should i waste my time drafting one when you will just use it and it will come to me anyway that is really smart there's an uh, there's another layer to them then <laughs> wow i really like that we don't we don't actually do the the full draft 
Uh, we do the other version where um, you know we just take ten cards because uh, you're ultimately supposed to have seven of each type. So we each take ten and then jettison three because oh my gosh, that's if we faster. Drafted, that would take forever. <laughs> oh, the, that is the truth of it. Well, Trevin yeah. says, wouldn't this have first been used in backgammon with the doubling cube? I don't remember how the doubling cube is used. I I don't know. I, I it, it sounds familiar to me. And I think Travis needs to go on Board Game Geek and hit the edit button. Because I can't fix all of these things, folks. I know I've been working on it over the last few weeks here. Oh, what about the Raz Arcana pass token? Yes. You're that's right. a good yeah, one. That, that's a brand new one. Now, I was going to say, I was wondering um, if this mechanism was going to die. Because, I mean, looking through the list of what is listed, I mean, it looks like Matt Gertz. It's, it might as well be called the Mac Gertz token because he was doing it in Imperial and then Navigador and then most recently in Concordia. But his newest game, Transatlantic, he dropped it. He didn't do it again, even though he could have since you know uh, Transatlantic is kind of a Concordia 2.0. Uh, so, and that is a shame because it's so cool in Agricola. So what is it in, a, what is it in Concordia again? In Concordia, it was, um, you know, the Prefect card. I, th I think it's the Prefect card that when you play that, you get to um, produce... From one of your colonies, um, if you use that card at the same, whatever the name of it is, the prefect Magnus or something, you double the effect of that, and then it goes on to the next player. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's yep. I. I don't know how these things are escaping me. I, again, this is a, a concept. I, I feel like this is in more than 16 games. You know, I'm I, sure. I feel like I feel like it is. In fact, if 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 anyone here is. Um, watching and you have a game that you think you've seen it and here's a good chance and also folks who are watching that beeping clicking sound sorry that was from my computer i turned on the system audio last night and didn't realize it was making the little popping noises come through but they're off now okay so monica says explorers of the north sea has a token that gives you two more actions in one turn okay and then you hand it to the next player i i have to admit explorers of the north sea that's kind of the uh the forgotten North Sea. Well, that, that was really? the third one, right? I would say Shipwrights is the forgotten one. but Well, Shipwrights I, 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 is good, but oh man, that is, that is a black-hearted game. That is a nasty, nasty game. But, uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it was a nice one. Hmm. This should be, okay. I mean, this is such an easy mechanism to add, and there's so many things that can be done with it. I mean, yeah, it, I do like this one. There are. I am shocked. It's such a short list. Yeah, again, I feel like I've played a game like this before. Um, when I think of this, I always think of Jaipur a little bit because of the camels. That's not a token, but there's yeah. that whole aspect of I'm doing something, but now I'm giving you the advantage. And yep. there are a lot of games that aren't in this category about tiebreakers where, like, there's a token or sometimes just you're on the side of the board. And if there's a tie, then whoever's at the top wins a tie. But now mm -hmm. you go to the bottom. And I feel yeah, like that's, yeah, yeah. that's a little similar. Yep. Um, with the support tokens and Samurai Spirit count. Oh, man. Uh, I played that once at Essen as a very quick pickup game, which I found out afterwards. Apparently, I was a total jerk throughout the game because somebody posted online about what a jerk Rado was. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? I was so embarrassed and mortified. Perhaps I didn't use the token appropriately. I did not care for the game, so I don't remember. But I only played it once i believe i uh, i don't remember if i reviewed this one or not innovation yeah. has a couple cards that does this someone said mm, okay. all righty well there you go well then maybe it uh bgg is behind the times it's an excellent mechanism and in closing it is yet another reason that agricola is clearly superior to caverna because caverna is... doesn't have any <laughs> i'll give you that i'll give you that point i guess yes <laughs> I don't think it's better, but I think... I'll take it, every yes. point I can get on your channel, pal. <laughs> All righty. Let's... Where are we at? Let's go to the top five. All right. All righty, folks. We're doing our definitive top five <coughs> games of... Well, top five something of all time. Yep. You tell and us. So th yeah, this is where you tell us. You're going to give us um, uh, a, a topic. I'm going to pick four of these topics, 
And then Rana will pick one of those, and then we'll give you the definitive five that will not be mocked mercilessly like our last one was. Um, oh, my gosh. Oh, but, but for, to be fair, Tom, you did get a lot of love for whatever that one show, Temple of the Sun or whatever it was, that you oh, this, wanted this, to throw out there. This, uh, the Cities of Gold, the Mysterious Cities, cities of Gold. Cities of Gold, yeah, there was a lot of love for that one. And I think our biggest mistake by far in the eyes of the internet was not even mentioning Thundercats. Uh, Honestly, not... I kept waiting for you to do it. I wouldn't have shot you down, but I wouldn't have brought it up because Lion-O and company were never really big in my household. I think maybe I missed it. Maybe I was too old by that time. Um, okay, I'm getting there. I got two so far. All right. Some of these are a little too broad. Um, <laughs> like one said, your top five board game covers... That would be a really hard. That'd be a really hard one to to think about. That would be. I, you could change that to our top five most memorable because the first five things we thought of probably just stuck with us more. I guess. Although yeah. honestly, I would just look around and I would just pick up. That few. is. That is. I used to do that actually. Uh, now I I can't do that anymore. But I used to when I make a top ten list, I'd walk into my game room and just look at all the games. Mm -hmm. uh, now I have to pull up my spreadsheets and charts and go through those, and it's not the same thing. Oh, it's not the same. You got to have that big moment in the movie where they just get surrounded and close the eyes and just you know, and the camera spins around you, and it just comes to you. Uh, let me see here. People are now talking about Thundercats. Thanks for bringing that oh, up. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Save it for Friday. <laughs> um, well, if you got three, I can pick from three. Three is I, a magic number. I don't know uh, why you chose four in the first place. I don't even know why either. All right, here we go. I got them. All right. All right. These are very generic ones, but that's okay. that's fine. So, food themed games. Okay. Worst expansions to games we'd like. Alexander Pfister games, and games with a robot theme. A robot theme. Wow. I I I, I could do Pfister because that would just be so easy. I could do that with my eyes closed. Um, but I, I want to challenge us a bit. Plus, we are in your backyard, so obviously I think we should do food-related games. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to pick the worst. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Food oh, related I see. games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say, "Well, this is where the negative stuff happens." So, <laughs> all right, food related games. Now, I am curious if there is a board game geek family. I bet on you there's food. a family, maybe not a genre, but a family. I see. And why did I even choose this? Because I can't think of any. And I know there's a few. There's a really good deck builder I liked quite a bit. Oh. All right. Up. Oh, there's a food cooking family. So I'm just gonna oh. go through these. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these are going to be ridiculous because I already saw, I'm not going to, we're going to talk about games that focus on food, not games that focus on feeding your people. Right. Because that's a whole different thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Although I, that's a good category for next week, folks. That's, that's fine. Games where you feed your workers. So I'm just going to name some stuff. And if you think it's possible, then say yes. If not, then it's automatically vetoed. I'm not saying it's in the top four. I'm just going to go through the list here. So we got Sushi Go. Well, that's obviously, I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, you just instantly, and the only question is, do you go with go, or do you go with party, or do you go with roll? Well, we can come back to that if it even makes the list. There's but I, 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 I cannot imagine it won't make it. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, I said one In game fact, so boom, far. done it. I am nominating Sushi Something well, for the top would, five food-related games of all time. To me, I like Sushi Roll a lot. But I think Sushi Go is more wide appeal. When I say Sushi Go, I mean Sushi Go Party because it just has okay. more stuff. It's okay, so that's thing. just a given. You're only considering Roll or Go Party. Yeah, that's because fine. I don't know why you would play Sushi Go in, over Sushi Go Party. It's literally the same thing with just more stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, all right. Then we got Food Chain Magnet, which I don't think Jason's either one of us here, will pick. So we don't have to... We, we don't have to go any farther on that. I mean, the, <laughs> neither of us deny that it's a it's a brilliant design, right? It is a very well designed game, but it's 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 too mean. It's oh either, my gosh! I like meanness, and this one, you know, this is the opposite of. Hey, why don't you remind everybody how it went for you the first time you played? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> and it, what was funny was, I, I, I was just, I've never felt so helpless in a game. I was just sitting there like halfway through going, huh, there's not a lot I can do other than wish we could rewind time and I make a different decision. So, all right. This one I've not played, so unfortunately I can't make the list, but you might have played it. Mor- oh, no, I played Morels. Morels is fan is a wonderful little game. You're right. I, play, I like I, Morels a lot, especially if you got his little hand-carved walking sticks that he made for like the first 200 people or something like that. Very, very nice, and it's a marvelous couple that made the game, but I found it ho-hum. However, it is ranked really? 60. It's ranked 680, so what do I know? Uh, not much. That's surprising. Mama Mia. I think you were in a bad mood that day. I was not. It's so charming. Mama and Mia. It's, it's really the basis. I, I won't put it on the list, though, because I think it has been supplanted by um, Enchanters, which is the same basic idea. You've got a row of stuff. You decide how far to move out to grab the card you need, but you're making fantasy weapons to fight off bad guys instead of cooking mushrooms. But anyway, right. what was the next one you said? Uh, Mama Mia. I don't know if you've played that one. No, I haven't. I'm not ancient like you. I've about- missed a lot of the classics. <laughs> Look at this. No gray, <laughs> baby. Ancient. Yeah, All right. it's, a little, uh, it's a little thin up here, unfortunately. But Wasabi. <sighs> All right. No worries. I'm just, I'm just throwing them out yeah, there. Yeah. I'm just reading. Scoville. Scoville's very cool. I almost don't think of that as a food game, though, really. I don't know where else is the hot peppers. I mean, well, I mean, you could eat those things straight. But, um, no, I, I think that's, that's more of a planting, harvesting game. The next is, you, at no point do you eat the – at no point – Yeah, you do. You deliver the, them. Does, do they you have deliver to eat them the to, food for it to be a food game? You're making know. chili out of them for people, don't you remember? They make all the yeah, Oh, that's chilies. true. Oh, that's right. That's how you convert them into points. Yeah, it's a good game, too. It's really sharp. Um, it's unfortunately it's not, I forgotten not top five, game. If you nominated it, I don't think I'd veto I'm, it. I'm not yet. I'm just, again, go through this. All right, right you got – we got Candyland. <laughs> we got a la carte, which is an old game for kids mostly, but it's still pretty cute. Mm-hmm. Um, New York Slice. The I figured you, I know you love that one. So well, I do like that. I also like the the the, the, the pie version of it. Actually, there's a new game called the the pie version is called Piece of Cake, but there's a new version a game from uh, Blue Orange called Piece of Pie. Okay. Which is a very simple drafting little game that reminds me of the ant game that Bruno Catala made. Um, you know, where you draft the different parts of an ant, make an ant colony? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. All righty, then we have uh, Kitchen Rush. Kitchen Rush, instant nomination. All righty, instant. I will. Okay. I, I, you know, all right, you're, 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 you're actually collating data. You're trying to actually make a real proper list. I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. Yeah, you are. But, okay. Uh, How about... Oh, so, fight to the end for Kitchen Rush. Viva Java, the coffee game, the dice game. <laughs> Have you played I guess that one? Coffee is food, I guess. Uh, well, go nuts. It was a nice donuts. game. It was actually very good. I never oh. played the original. I only played the dice game version, but it was very good. The the original was unfortunately a little bloated and not as good. The dice game is a cool little Yahtzee style game. Right. They um, they they hit the right spot. They yeah. Uh, we got, um, well, Slam, which I don't think you're going to put in there. Um, no. Slam, which is that. Walkstar is a possibility. Walkstar would also be high on my list, definitely. That gets an asterisk. All righty, I'm moving down here. There's actually not a lot of food games in here. Uh, Burger Up is a pretty cool one. Um, I'm going to, okay, well, this is sort of a food game. The, yeah. the recent Chocolate Factory. Oh, and it's excellent. That's the conveyor belt one, right? Yeah. It is the conveyor belt oh one. Oh, my gosh. That. I might have a hard time nim- limiting this to five. Um, That's a bunch of really good ones. Someone put apples to apples. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Well, there's, there's a couple new games out. I don't know if you played either of these. There's Foodies from Come On Games. No, I saw that at... Uh, at your last convention, they, they were making a big splash with it. it. It looked like it was very popular, but I haven't played it, no. What about Consumption? Have you played that Consumption one? Consumption is a good game. I do like it. And um, I thought I really like the, oh, what do you call it? The, the, the supermarket shopping, like minigame off to the side. But 
It's certainly a good food game, but it is not as good as the ones we've already mentioned. What about I'll point, point salad? Ooh. I would. The only argument you can make against that is it's pretty abstract. Is it really about food, or is well, it really just about card I'm games? Not, I'm not sure, like, the New York slices great, either. Though. You're just grabbing a piece of pizza. You don't really care if it's pepperoni or not. You care how many yeah, but, I mean, but, but, but the theme comes alive in that game. You got all the big – it's a – look at these pizzas. Um – does the game have to make you hungry for it to be considered a top five food game? I think you could make that argument. Just because you start salivating because you sat there for a half an hour or an hour. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think about this one, but this one might work. A Rosenberg game. I, and most of his games involve feeding people, but he has one game that's very strongly food-oriented, and that's Rakehold. Oh! Wait, oh, is that the Norwegian fishing billet one? Well, it's Iceland, but yes. Oh, Iceland, oh, thank you, sorry. The Scandinavian fishing really one? Oh, no, Scand that's not Iceland. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all the Icelanders who are watching, I apologize. Oh, I've moved back to America. I've lost all my Europeness. obviously. I I'm no longer worldly. I'm just l lumping them all together. Um, yeah, I mean, you're right. I guess food is a bigger thing in that, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's as big a deal as it is in Feast for Odin, where the feast is literally in the title. What about fabled fruit? You make smoothies. I don't think so. What about Cupcake Empire? You have played that. I have not. That is high on my list of games to play. Wow. Well, Should I, it be? I, I think you would like it. I really do. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, the other game from that same designer, I did like Yukon Airways, except it was a pickup and deliver game, whereas Cupcake Empire is an engine building game, which I love. So I, I you would have to nominate it, and I would... I, 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 but I, I am really excited about Cup. It's on my shelf in the next room. I've been wanting to play it for months. Well, I've got most of the uh, very high ones here. So here's what I, here's what I think. I've, for, I've got what one you've more said. that is further down. I, I, I skipped ahead to find it, and you probably haven't played it. Cuisine a la carte. I don't even know how to spell that. Cuisine a la carte is basically Star Realms rethemed to food. Go on. Uh, that's that's it. It is a deck building game. A big part of the deck building is instead of just having oh the the yellow starships and the blue starships and the red star ships, you have different classifications of food, and so you're trying to mix the vegetable classification together to get lots of card combos or the meat classification and all that. And it's really sharp. I have to admit, I had I played it before I played Star Realms, and I thought, this is such an amazing, it's so cool, what a smart way to do a deck builder where it just has these built-in combos that makes everybody feel smart. And then a few years later, I played Star Realms, and like, oh, this is a poor man's cuisine a la carte, because cuisine a la carte actually improves on it. <laughs> so I feel very strongly about that one, but I'd understand it's a bit more under the radar, so if you'd want to veto it. Well, let's let's go with the ones that okay. So we all we both agree on sushi go. I think so. Slash party whatever. Okay, and we both yep. agree on kitchen rush. Yes. All right. You did. You agree on kitchen rush. Fantastic. I do. So great. I haven't played the expansion, which I hear is wonderful as well. I also would push strongly for chocolate factory because that's such a fantastic. Yes, game. chocolate factory. I love conveyor belts. I had no idea until recently. <laughs> I discovered I, conveyor I, belts are amazing. Yeah, I actually just downloaded a game on Steam. I forget what it's called, but it's about factories and moving stuff on conveyor belts. And I was like, yes, I love conveyor belts. <laughs> That's so stupid. This is what board games does to a person. Well, Sushi sushi Roll is technically a conveyor belt, too. That's a good point, yes. Um, all righty. So then, I know you like Walkstar a lot. I'm just hesitant to put Walkstar and Kitchen Rush on the same list because That's they're a very, fair very point. similar. I would definitely give that. I would probably. And of the two, I mean, Walkstar is a great game. And it's, I mean, it ties into our previous one. We were talking about action timers. And, you know, it really, if it didn't introduce that idea, it kind of popularized that idea. But at the end of the day, it's a bit more abstract. As opposed to Kitchen Rush, you really feel it come to life. You are in the kitchen. You are serving the customers. You are back in the stock room. You are, you are paying your employees. Um, and I, I would probably give it to Kitchen Rush as an evolution of Walkstar, I think. Yeah, I I feel more strongly than you do. I think this is our most do. serious one yet. We're really taking this one seriously. <laughs> I, of course I, it's food. Of course you are. I feel more strongly than you do about consumption. I, I was very impressed with it. I think yeah. of all the games that we've talked about, it has the strongest theme. Okay. Hands I, down. I, I, I completely agree. 
Um, and I also like too. It's funny. I actually played an early pre-release version of it. She actually uh, contacted me, and I, I played it while I was still before Travis Chance ever saw it. And at that point, it was a very strong pro-vegan game, and everything you did, if it wasn't vegan, was bad for you. And uh, and I and I my biggest feedback to her was, look, you're, you got to make this game for everybody, not just yeah. for you. <laughs> there actually is someone in there now who like. You're like trying to eat junk food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind if they have. Um, I actually like the more balanced diets myself over the specialized ones, but it works. Um, okay, well, so here's, okay, I'm going to put that on the bubble. I'm not. Um, I'm, I'm not vetoing it yet. But what else did we have? All right. So we also had Viva Java, um, Scoville, uh, Walkstar, uh, Point Salad, um, New York Slice. Uh, I was also going to mention. I don't know if you played the little game from. Um, Jason Kataski, uh, Filler. The, the name of the game is Filler. No, 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 I haven't. Oh, oh that's okay. like one of those deck builder, the deck building game type uh, joke. No, I don't. It actually, I don't feel like it's made to be a joke. It's actually about filling desserts. I, it okay. might, I, I don't, they didn't reference it, unlike greater than games. Um, there's a lot of cool little games. Like, I would have probably... Well, there's yeah. like there's like that um, another card drafting game that was about running uh, an ice cream van, right? I remember oh, that one. Oh, oh, oh. Well, that one I really like, but I assumed you didn't play that one. Rocky Road a la mode. Yeah, right. Thank you, Rocky Road a la mode. No, I, yeah, uh, that was that was a really cool one. All those little uh, colorful pops you make. Yeah, I like that one. Oh, and it was a Rondell game. Yeah, it was a very good little Rondell for beginners type thing. It was sharp. Yeah, that one deserves consideration. I think. I'm really surprised, considering how many years you spent bemoaning the lack of food-themed games. Or no, no, you always bemoaned the lack of supermarket games. That's what it was. Well, there still is very few of those, although I guess you can go to the supermarket in consumption. So yeah. there's a, uh, most food-themed games are very, very simple in the sense of, here's a bunch of candy, collect this much candy. Here's yeah, a, yeah. Here's a, a cake, split the cake and take some of it. And, and that's fine. That, that works well, but there's... Like, but those are practically a, abstract games with just a food theme layered on top. Like there's an old As Euro opposed to Kitchen Rush, where it's all about real food and real decisions about food. Which is an argument for consumption. Like, have you played Ristorante Italian? No. No. Yeah, see, that's like an older Euro game. And it was about building a plate of food and then serving them in the restaurants. I like that. Some people even consider Vinhos... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, there's, there's like a whole spate of wine-themed games, wasn't there? I'm, sure. Honestly, I... I guess wine or liquids are food, but that doesn't. Fe I I don't think I would put a liquid-based game in my top ten food All games. Right, no worries. I'll cross off Viva Java. Fortunately, we only have five to pick. Yeah, we and pick you know what? The more I think about it, that little reminder about how so many foods are really just abstract games with Candy Crush themes thrown on top of it really does make me come back to consumption. All right. Well, then you could pick the final one. Okay. Well, then it's Cuisine All Card, baby. All right, I don't even know how to spell it, but I'll put it on the list. Yes. I need to look this up now, though. How? What does it look like? Um, it, well, it's cuisine. C U I S. -I, I found it. Yep. Ah, right, here I'm gonna show. And, and you should check it out if you haven't. It's really good. I'm gonna show it to y'all. Alrighty. It came out in 2015. It's not been played many times. It's from no, In Motion. It, it just, yeah. It was a uh, a first publication. From actually, if I recall correctly, a bunch of video game designers and video game developers who said, "Hey, we're going to put this game out," and they did, and it was promptly forgotten. It's a shame it didn't get picked up because, um, I mean, Star Realms is fine. It's a it's a good game, and Hero Realms is cool, but um, to me, this really elevated. It, it did a lot more interesting stuff within that core structure that There's Star actually Realms a kind of popularized. There's actually a watch it played for this. <laughs> and a runner oh, really? runs through, of course. Yeah. This is the only game this company ever did. Yeah. Well, like well I, said, I, mean, I think it was it's just the only board friends. game. They made the game and they had no ambitions other than, look, we made our game. We can play it with our families. It's, pro it's professionally produced. We're going to go back to our regular lives now, which is what a lot of Kickstarter games are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Well, this is ranked on Board Game Geek 6,214, which is actually quite good. Yes. Um, because uh, I know this because I'm currently going through the ones that are 10,000 and below. So, alrighty. 
<laughs> so that's Sushi Go Party, Kitchen Rush, Chocolate Factory, Consumption, and Cuisine a la Carte. Cuisine a la Carte. I feel really good about that list. I think this is our best list. I'm not going to go there, but it's yay. Uh, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's jump to questions. Okay. All right. Hey, we saved some time for questions this time. That's exciting. All right. We can do more um, than three. Well, that all depends on who's answering. Well, yeah, it remains to be seen. But... To <laughs> all righty. So if you all have questions, here's a chance to, for us to answer them, realizing, of course, that we don't answer the questions that get asked so much that we put them both. We both, I think we're the only two board game people that have made our own FAQs uh, <laughs> for questions that we get asked all the time. <laughs> so if you're, yep. if many times if we don't answer a question, that's why. Yes, there's, there's, there's even like a generic questions I feel like I should put on the list. Like I'm tired of answering what theme I want to see more in board games. What's my favorite mechanism? You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That's a good idea. I don't think I have those on. And you're right, those pop up all the time. I, one of my um, most used FAQ ones is, I really like this game, what should I get? And I do actually have an entry for that. And the answer is, please go to the recommendation form on Board Game Geek, and you will get 10,000 better answers than you would get from me. Sure, and also, I always tell people on that same thing, I don't know you. You know, exactly. I'm, I'm very hesitant to even tell my friends, but once I get to know a friend really well, I play some games with them, I, yep. then I, even then I might be wrong. So yeah. it's really best that you, that's again, the whole reason we do these playthroughs and reviews. Exactly. Right. What's our videos? Decide for yourself. So but hey, first, you've got a question. Our first question is... The most memorable is, food experience. Yes. Um, that's interesting because there's been so many of them. I could do a top hundred on this one. But I, I, could, I remember, I think, when I was in Korea, and it was after my first year teaching there, a Korean family who obviously had some money took the, all the teachers out to eat. And that we went to a Chinese restaurant, uh, I guess a Korean Chinese restaurant, because Chinese restaurants are, I always consider them, there's American Chinese, Korean Chinese, and Chinese. They're very different restaurants. Like, oh, wow. really okay. different. Um, but... We went in there, and they just kept bringing dish after dish. And I had not yet been to China, and that's how China is. They just keep bringing these dishes out, and you all take some of it. But they brought out what I thought were lobsters, but they were shrimp. Then the shrimp were, like, this big. And they brought out this lobster, which was just humongous. And I was sad that I had to share it with the other teachers. But um, <laughs> it was just – it was really well done. It was very nice. It was in a very small restaurant that we had, like – had the whole place to ourselves. It was like a minor little thing off the beaten path, but that is one of my most memorable food experiences. So I'll go with that. Okay, that's a good one. I have three to mention, and I'm really torn between which one to do. I had to pick one. Um, do you want to hear about pizza or Chinese food? Because that'll narrow it down. I will do Chinese because I, I did Korean. Okay. I did Chinese. Well, that, that's the too. simplest one. Uh, I, I was 35. I'd been making video games for almost a decade, and my wife and I were saying, hey, we don't have kids. Should we finally do it? Should we pick up sticks and move to Europe? We've been thinking about it. We've been talking about it for years. And it was my 35th birthday, and we went to a local Chinese restaurant that we both really loved. And after the meal was over, I don't remember the meal at all, but we got our fortune cookies, and I opened mine, and it literally said, you will soon go across the great water. And that, we were just, whoa, um, you know, completely <laughs> floored by that. And I carried that little strip of paper in my wallet for years. And if anything was ever going bad, I said, look, it's this thing's fault. We could still be in America if it wasn't for this, because that's what, it, not exactly what pushed us over the top, but it was, you know, we're not big universes talking type people, but I mean, we were talking about it the very second I cracked that cookie. And on my 35th birthday. So that was a pretty memorable moment, definitely. All right. All right. Monica wants to know, have you ever gotten up from the table mid-game and why? And I'm assuming this is excluding emergencies. Oh, mid-game. I thought you said and made a game. Have you ever gotten up and just walked away from a game that was not an emergency? All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say so. Occasionally, I mean, I work really, really hard to make sure. I mean, unlike Tom, who you know says, 
Hey, world, send me your games. I don't care. Bring them. Bring them. Well, Hit me, not, bro. Not quite. That's that's. That, I, I have, but, I have a but. limit. <laughs> I am very, very cautious, and I say, hey, don't send me your game until I've read your rule book, and I say no nine out of ten times. So by the time it hits our table, it's already been pretty thoroughly vetted. But still, occasionally, we'll get halfway through a game and like, oh, oh, I don't know. Do you want to keep going? I don't want to keep going. Do you want to keep? No. And we, and we'll, I mean, because when that happens, um, we have no particular desire to prolong that. Because while every turn we're taking in a game that, oh, this isn't working for us, we could be doing anything else. And so when that happens, uh, we stop halfway through. I contact the publisher and say, hey, I'm sorry. We really didn't like your game. Do you still want me to do that video? Because I don't think it'll do you any good. Here's some feedback if it was like a Kickstarter prototype and they could fix stuff. But that happens occasionally. And we early on decided it is not worth the trouble to plow through to the other side. Yes, Maybe it would all come together in the final round, and it would be amazing. But you know what? Once we're a few rounds in, nine times out of ten, we pegged it because we've played enough games to know. Well, that, sure. I'm trying to think the last time this happened. Like, I mean, it's, I, I'll never forget one time my daughter hit her head and had Ooh. to go to the hospital. Oh. oh, my. And I was at a gaming thing. My wife called me, and I remember, like, the... You know, in the movies when they show that camera zoom up on someone and the background fade away, I, I, I could feel that, and I was just like, I have to go. I I don't. I dropped everything. I said, uh, I'll get the games from you guys later, and they're like, go, and I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was an emergency. That's yeah. She was fine. It was just a forehead, you know, cut. But you know, when you get you're cutting your forehead, tons of blood. Um, but uh, like for a bad reason, I mean. We, I've stopped games in the middle, too, but usually the group is like, thank you. Thank you for stopping the game. <laughs> you were the only thing keeping it going in the first place. Well, yeah. my rule of thumb is if everybody, mostly everybody feels pretty strongly about stopping a game, we'll stop it, of course. I don't want to make people do things, something they don't like doing. If there's one person who really wants to finish the game, they have to have a really good reason if it's like four people and one person like, I want to finish. I'm like, why do you want to finish? Is it because you want to win? Because then we'll just declare you the winner right now. Yeah, we, we can acquiesce right now. Right. But if it's because you love the game, then sure, we'll finish it for you. And it's usually yeah. because they want to win. Or sometimes they'll go, I was just about to do this strategic thing. I'm like, fine, well, let's just let's keep going until you – and then usually, almost always, they do that thing and they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I'm good. <laughs> but I left a table out of anger 15 years ago maybe, 20 years uh -oh. ago. What it's happened? It's been – it's been so long. I'm. Uh, I think it was. Well, diplomacy. I think for sure. Oh sure sure. Um. Well, diplomacy is designed to have you leave the table, right? Sure. Don't you have to go into back rooms and negotiate. Well, yeah, you do. Stuff? Once we get to <laughs> twenty five, thirty five years ago, then as a kid, I think it's happened, but not too often. Oh, I just don't, oh yeah, as a kid. I'm I sure usually just don't get that mad. I mean, I get mad during a game occasionally, but I won't quit the game over it. I assume I'm sure I'm sure the, the underlying question here: ha, Have you ever done it out of anger? And the closest I have ever been, because really the reality is, my wife and I we're b best friends. You know, we we're very compatible, so we don't have that problem. Sure, the best closest I ever argue. came to walking away in anger was that game with Jason Levine of Princess of Florence. <laughs> but the problem was he drove me there, so I could have gotten up and left and said, "Okay, we're leaving, Jason. Now drive me to Tom's place," and that just didn't. So I'm like, "Okay, I got to make this work." And then that's when I had my moderate sized blow up of Jason, you are ruining this game for everyone. And I had to raise my voice. And actually, the, re the reality was everybody else at the table was totally used to Jason. They were like, no, we're used to it. It's fine. It's normal. <laughs> oh, okay, Jason, you are ruining this game for me. <laughs> All right. What's your favorite airport to travel through? Ooh. <laughs> um,. Do you have one? I've got kind of an odd choice. Well, to travel through. <sighs> well, I mean, through means beginning and ending. You do move through it if it's your final destination or what have uh, you. Okay, because I really like the Malaysia airport in KL. Um, but in America, it's going to be Atlanta. I like Atlanta just because I've gone through oh, it sure. so much. I know where everything is. I know that I know where there's the quiet spot that I can go to that no one else goes to. I know where the, all the good restaurants are. I that at, at, in America, easy Atlanta 
Overseas, definitely Malaysia. Mm. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, America for me is probably Seattle, but that's more than anything else because I've spent so much time there because when we lived in Seattle, we were fairly close to SeaTac Airport. And so we were always dropping people off and picking them up just because, hey, you're three miles away. Could you come and do this for us when we were in our 20s? But the real one for me is a very, very tiny little podunk airport in Redmond, Oregon. And the reason for that is uh, that was our local little, you know, puddle hopper, you know, prop plane airport. And a million years ago, when I was first in the video game industry, and we were working on builds for um, Siphon Filter, we would, uh, you know, this was before the internet, before we could, hey, let's just email the latest build or put it on an FTP server and let them download. We would work all night long getting the latest build together for Sony that we had to send off the next morning, and we'd burn the discs. And um, then I remember Susan Agashira and I, at four o'clock in the morning, and this happened almost weekly for half a year, would drive almost an hour to get to the Redmond Airport and drop off this build that had to get to San Francisco within two hours so they could start testing it that day. And that was an incredibly stressful time in my life. And um, one of the few reasonably good things was that sense of accomplishment every time I handed off another one of those discs at the Redmond Airport. And uh, they didn't understand, why do you keep showing up every day or every week at 4 a.m. to send this to San Francisco? Because, again, this was back in the 90s and it made no sense. There was no concept of it. But you know, I, I do remember, I remember that whole time in my life very vividly. And um, like I said, that was, whew, okay, we made it through another mini crunch. This is done. I can take a day off, and then it's going to get insane again as we start getting ready for the next one. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a really near and dear personal one for me. All right. What's your favorite role in Pandemic? Ooh. Um, Basic. We talked about this. The, you know, the generalist is, um, which I was wrong. I said six. It was five actions. My mistake. Um, I think the scientist. I really like the scientist. Which one's the scientist? He he lets you he lets you cure something with fewer cards. Okay, I don't remember the name, but I, I can't remember the name. But I just remember the functions. The one that allows you to move other people. The dispatcher. The, logistics, the dispatcher. I have always in every group game I have always played a support character wherever possible. That's all. I always just like having my turns being devoted to helping other people do what they want to do. So dispatcher has always been perfect for me. What if you just tell people what to do in their turn? I'm going to move you here. Like, I, I, don't, I, I don't want you to move me there, but that's the best move for you. I think there you. is a caveat. I think there's a caveat in the rule book about having to have their permission. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't in the original book, though. So I say, hey, we're going by original rules, baby. You're going where I say you go. I am dispatching you. All right. What's your best board game acquisition done by trading? Oh, yeah. Trading. I used to do math trades all the time, um, as I revealed <laughs> last yes, week. We, we know about, about your math trading there. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll tell you mine, because mine's, mine's really easy. I played yeah. Warhammer 40,000, uh, collected a gigantic army of Eldar, and I was kind of done with that part of my life. And so I went online to look for someone to trade it to and found Richard Borg. Didn't know him oh, wow. very well at the time. So he took my whole collection because he said he was going to make a futuristic version of Command and Colors. So he's going to use my models for stuff like that. And he gave me one of everything he had designed at the time. Jeez Louise. And so there were games I hadn't were heard of. Were you Tom Vassell at that point? Or Not, were you just random internet person? I was more, I was like doing some reviews. Wasn't very okay. strong. I was like very young Tom Vassell. How's that? Okay, all right. Uh, to the point where I don't even have the... I don't even have the emails saved anymore, and I keep a lot of emails pretty far back. Okay. Um, but it was pretty neat. I got these boxes and boxes of board games and that he had designed, and I'm, here I am playing Hera and Zeus and a Liar's Dice and, you know, of course, wow. mem uh, not memoir because that hadn't come out yet, but Battle Line and stuff. It was really neat. And that was a nice jump start to the hobby for me, one of the jump starts for me. That was a really good trade. I, 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 I was glad to have done that. That's amazing, yeah. Good on him. I I can't follow that. I don't have anything. When I first got into the hobby uh, back in 2010, and uh, I was trying to discover what it is that Jen and I even like, and doing a lot of experiments, 
and finding more often than not I failed and ended up getting clunkers that we just did not enjoy, I very quickly realized, oh, there is no danger here at all. If I don't like it, I'll just put in the next match trade and it'll be gone and I'll get something else. And so in that time, I probably traded, I don't, I can't say hundreds of games, but it feels like it. It was just a constant flow. Um, and I felt like, oh, well, you know what? The, the amount I'm having to spend for shipping this game to somebody else, because they're going to get me back a game of comparable value, that was kind of like my rental fee, if I think of it as renting a movie. Yeah, you know, I never think twice about, you know, the cost to rent a movie. I didn't think twice about but getting any was, game I wanted. Shipping was clearly cheaper back then. It was a lot cheaper back then. Um, yeah, things are very different now. When I moved back to the States a couple of years ago, I thought, this is it. I'm going to go back to hardcore math trading. And I got in my first one, and I, I, I made three or four nice trades. I was happy with them. And then I took them down to the post office. And what?! 120 bucks to send four games? What are you talking? This is ridiculous. And then I stopped doing math trades, sadly. And that was the end of that. All righty, let's see. Ooh, best TV show theme song? We should save that for a top five someday. That's a good one. Yes, come back on Fridays when we do non-game related ones. Uh, that's interesting. What's your worst board game experience feel like? And, and this is kind of interesting because... It doesn't have to necessarily be something that, you know, like my first thought is, oh, I'm really mad. So that some, someone made me mad in the game. But there can also be I brought a game to the table. I thought everyone would love it, and they didn't. Yep. Um, I, I know exactly. I can remember, I can remember it vividly. Um, well, I'd like uh, to apologize it's, it's, first. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It was, it was entirely unrelated to the Dice Tower. Um, although, yeah, that Carson City game and that, um, you know, that, that, oh, that even day, started when I came to your place, that was, <laughs> oh, there were some highs and lows that day. There was definitely but, a low point. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was it? Stockpile, I think is the name of the excellent market manipulation game, right? Yes. Where if you want, you can play as Donald Trump, but that's not what the issue was. When I, the first time Jen and I played Stockpile a few times, we really liked it a lot. I was very impressed by it. But then we had some friends of ours over, and we played a four-player game. And I still remember, I don't remember what card it was, but I, you know, a big part of Stockpile is, oh, you've got some junk cards. Okay, put them in and make sure you stay away from that particular pile of stocks, because it's bad. But somebody's going to get that pile of stocks eventually. Right. And I remember putting it in there, and as soon as I did, oh my god. Whoever takes that deck is going to be ruined. And Angela took it. And I'm like, and I'm, oh, I am, I'm, oh, please, Angela, don't take it. Just don't take it. I should take it myself. It's just so, and, you know, and, and she took it and she was looking at cards and, and her face just crumbled. It just, and, and my soul just crumbled. I, I realized I can never play this game again. Uh, I, I still remember that. And I don't know if you remember it, Angela, in case you're watching this, but oh, man. That was that, that was a very defining moment for me as I realized, yeah, um, any kind of cutthroatedness, it's, it's, it's out. I'm, I'm never going to experience the feeling that it engenders in me to do something that sets somebody else back so hard. Because it was a brilliant play. I don't remember. I think it might have won me the game. It certainly completely knocked Angela out, and she did not recover. And for the rest of the game, she, had a, she, she, she was chipper. She put on a good face. But, oh, I still remember it. Uh, the sinking feeling in my, the pit in my stomach. I think for her, it's just like, oh, well, that's too bad. I'll move on. But I felt so awful. Yeah, I, I don't care so much about that. I'll, I'll giggle about that. <laughs> I, I mean, no, I mean, there are some people I feel bad about doing something to. Especially, I feel bad sometimes in a game where you can see someone domino effects. They're already losing. And then they turn over the one bad event card. And then... The one action they were going to do, I picked, even though I didn't know that was what they wanted to do. Sure. You sure, know, sure. just one of those those games. I've had... I, one of them was I played with a guy when I was in Korea who was a captain in the army. And we played... Um, we played uh, an old Avalon Hill game about airplanes. Okay. Air, something tycoon, jet tycoon, airport tycoon, whatever. And he kept calling. He, he, he was one of those guys who would complain if he's winning. You know, like, oh, I'm not winning. I'm not winning. You know, oh, that. Yeah, one of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was already enough of that. But he kept rolling and he kept saying the dice were, 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 were loaded dice. 
and they were going against him. He kept complaining and going on and on and on and on. And this is like a three-hour game. So we're just going on. And after hour two, I, I don't know what happened. I snapped. I stood up and shouted at him and said, shut up now. This is like a captain in the U.S. Army. Um, you, you, you said, shut up now and thank you for your service. No, I didn't, I didn't thank him for his service at all, actually. Um, I really laid into him. And I, I don't do that normally, like, at all. Uh, oh, my gosh. Um, and so the, we finished the game, right? And he won, of course. And then I saw him a couple days later, and I apologized. And he apologized, and we never played another game again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I, I felt bad about my reaction. I shouldn't let myself get pushed that much. But, man. It was one of those things. So that again, I like to point out this was many, many years ago. All right. Yeah. This is a good question. What game took the most time to do a review, not counting legacy games? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Well, I'm gonna assume that includes the entirety of not not just the actual making of it, but you know, everything that I had to do up until then. And again, not counting legacy games, because of course you got to play through 10, 12, 14 games. Just a regular game, for me, nothing comes close to Myth. Uh, I remember Myth put me through the ringer in such a big, bad way. Because I really liked the game a lot. I love the core mechanisms. But you know full well, Tom. Uh, I don't that want to talk book, about Myth. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Well, I mean, I, that, that, I'm sorry to bring it up. It, 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 but it just, it's, I, I probably spent at least a week and a half full time on the forums for board game geek and what was the publisher was it no it wasn't monolith i forget uh, but what, you know they they had very active forums and i was constantly in there yeah but what about this what about this and jen and i would play another game and we actually ended up playing a game with david and angela so we could see the four player i uh, i played that game Megacon so games. much and um and i i had to work so hard to make sense of it and eventually, ironically, I then went on ahead and did the video, and it's probably still one of my most error-laden videos. Because even after almost two weeks of prep work, I was still in the dark about so much stuff on that game. And, um, and yeah. So And the less it, said about that, the better, I suppose. No, Sorry, that's fine. It no, it actually taught me a lesson. So for Myth, yeah. for us, the designers said, hey, I'll fly in and teach you guys the game. And I was like, yeah, why not? And yeah. so he did. And we went over and reviewed it, and people said, how come you didn't mention how bad the rule book was? I was like, well, because, you know, we got taught the game, and we got we got raked over the coals for that, exactly. and justly so, so I don't yeah. do that much at all anymore. And it wasn't just you. I took a lesson from that, too, because I saw that happening, and I totally understood, because, honestly, halfway through that process, if they had offered to fly to my house, I would have said, yes, please, please, please. <laughs> yeah. I'm dying over here. Uh, uh, they would have had to fly to Malta, so that wasn't going to happen. Um, but I, I, I saw that same plaque, and to this day, I will get publishers for Kickstarter games saying, hey, if you want, we'll do a FaceTime with you or, or whatever, and we'll walk you through it. And I always say, no, send me the rules. I'm going to learn it myself, because I do think that was like a very kind of important moment for, for our profession, really. Yes. So, I mean, I, I think you... you, you <laughs> You're all welcome. You <laughs> created a good um, you know, uh, process that I think we should all pay attention to. All right. So, quickly for me, uh, there was easily... There was there was two. One is silly. The other is not. The one was Gloomhaven uh, because oh, sure. I really wanted to make this a good review. It wasn't the first review. And I, I, I wanted to play it and I thought about it. And I eventually split it into two things. I did a review and then I did a why I love Gloomhaven. Um, but I really, there was just so much in that game that I, I sat and thought about it and worked on it for a while. And then Battlecon, uh, War of Endines. Endines, yeah, okay. Endines, not, uh, I, f I forget which one it was. It was the second one. And in this that's one... A, that's a Street Fighter style game, right? Yes. And in okay. this game, he has all these cards for the characters and extra cards and alternate art cards and everything. And I did my component drop for this game without thinking, brah, right? And then realized... Oh, no. It wasn't clear what cards went to which person, and it oh, also wow. wasn't listed in the rule book. And that took hours and hours of me sitting there, slowly going online, looking at the pictures, comparing them, trying to figure out which cards went to which, which is why in these kind of games you will not see component drops anymore because I've learned my <laughs> lesson, or I'll cheat and just grab like four characters and be like, look, that's the whole game probably. Yep, yeah. Um, so. And it was after that that the Dice Tower... Hired their first intern, I suppose. No, I, I actually still... Okay, that's not true. I don't sort out that much. But I sort out... 
If it's a card game, I often sort those out because I like sorting cards for one. Hmm. And two, I could do it better than the, the kids can to some degree. But, oh, wow. That that was a, a, a very fun thing. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's it. We're at 3 o'clock. We're going to be back again, folks, at 2 o'clock on Rado's channel. Rado runs through. This is this coming Friday. Anything yep. else people have to look forward to? Uh, no, not particularly. Oh, this Saturday, which I'll remind everybody on Friday, Rado Runs Through Live returns after a two-year hiatus. Jen and I are going to start once again doing monthly live playthroughs of games for everybody to tune in and watch. Uh, one of the games we'll be doing this Saturday is Trails of Tucana. So um, go find the link for it now because you can download the sheet so that you will be able to play along with Jen and I because it's a nice little bingo-y roll and write. So, uh, yeah, that's the other big thing coming for me this week. All righty. Well, that's that. Um, we got other stuff coming out. I got just now, I, I just started my new series, 10,000 Games and Below, where I look at games ranked 10,000 or lower on Board Game Geek. All righty. Well, until all next right. time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Rado. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>